Butte. Hey, everybody. This is Jeff Hester from Social Adventures and Social Hiker, founder of the Six Pack Peaks Challenge. We're going to talk a little bit about how to connect with other people to hike with if you want to do group hikes and um, what are some of the ways that you can, what are the things you need to be aware of to be safe and to take care of yourself when you join group hikes and how to find people to hike with if you want to do that. Um, there's a lot of different ways that I've found that have worked for me. Uh, I'm going to share a few of those and a few ways that some of our ambassadors and other folks have shared uh, how they've connected with people to do group hikes. So welcome to the live stream. If you are joining us, I hope that you'll um, say hello in the comments. So leave a comment, say you know where you're connecting from. And if you have ever done a group hike, let me know how you found that group. Uh, I want to know what has worked for you. So if you could, um, let us know. All right, let's jump into this and see. This, oh, by the way, just as a point of housekeeping, we are going to have a recording of this. So if for some reason the schedule didn't work out for you or you missed the notification on Facebook, um, there will be a, lot, a recording of this and we'll have all of the notes and all of that good stuff for you um, afterwards. Let's see if I can kick this sucker off. All right. So we're talking about hiking together. This is a photo of a hiking group that I led down in South Orange County every Wednesday for a lot, you know several years. Um, and we would hike a 4.6 mile trail after work, um, something that I called Roller Coaster Ridge. That's not the official trail name, but it would lead to a flagpole that overlooked the Dana Point Harbor and the Pacific Ocean and not, to, not, not on that particular night, but on many nights, there was beautiful sunsets. And then afterwards, we got back to our cars. We'd, we'd drive on our way back home. We'd stop and have uh, fish tacos. So we kind of break bread together. It was a great way to do that. Uh, some of these folks I'm still in contact with today, uh, many, many years later, over 10 years later. Wow. Um, so why, why would you hike with others? I mean, I think Hiking is something that is not a competition sport. It's something that we do because we love to be outside. We love the outdoors. We love the re to, we love to reconnect with nature and unplug from technology and sitting in, in a, at a computer or whatever the, it is you do for your day job. It's really nice to be able to get outside, get fresh air. And uh, whether you do that solo or in a group. So why would you want to do it with others? Well, here's a few of the reasons that that come to mind for me. One, it's it's a really special thing when you can bring together different people from different backgrounds and different you know places in their lives and share that wonderful experience of being outside and being outdoors. Um, so it's a great way to share that experience. And if you can do it with people that are your friends, even better, um, which leads to the second point. I think friendship and camaraderie are one of the reasons why many people love to hike with others. I like to do that. It's a great, you know, to catch up with friends uh, as you hike along. You don't have the distractions of, you know, your phone or your, or the TV or the internet or whatever's, you know, nagging, you know, other chores you have to do around the house or in the office. You just have the trail and your friends. And it's a great way to kind of catch up and decompress. Um, in some cases, it's for added safety. Um, and I'll share a little bit more about that, but there can be safety in numbers. So that's a great reason why a lot of people like to hike with others. But mostly, I think the most important thing is to, because it's fun. Uh, yeah, Gerardo says, yeah, that's one of the reasons that he uh, hikes with groups for safety. And it's a great reason. And Terry, hey, thanks for joining us. Um, they say that they couldn't finish their first hike, so now needs to know, find other people. So we're going to help you try to hopefully um, find that. It can be tough if your friends aren't doing the same level or they're not prepared for it and it's too much. That can be a tough thing to to uh, to find folks to hike with. So hopefully we can you know give you some tools to, to do that. When you hike with others, you are not a tourist. And it's easy to fall into that trap. I've done this myself where um, I've, I've both been a group hike leader and a group hike participant. 
And it's easy when you are a participant to kind of like put it on cruise control and just follow the leader. And we should be following the leader, but we also need to take our personal responsibility for our own safety uh, and to know, you know, the surroundings and know navigation and how we're going to get back. So even if you're in a group hike, you still want to share your itinerary with a friend or a family member who will not be hiking with you. So they know where you're going. They know when you're starting. They know when you're expected to return. And they know when to call search and rescue if that if it comes to that. So it's really important that we do that. Uh, there was a hiker in the Southern California area who um, was a very experienced hiker who um, was climbing, doing winter mountaineering up San Gorgonio a couple weeks ago and did not return to his car. It was a day hike, did not return to his car at the end of the day. And so his family knew where he was. They knew he was expected and, you know, they, they started the process and search and rescue got involved. Unfortunately, the weather would not allow them to get out there until the next day. And uh, fortunately, however, David, uh, this particular person was able to make his way back to his car after spending a night in the wilderness. So he had prepared himself well enough to be able to weather that those conditions um, with snow and cold temperatures and really hard, harsh winds, 60 mile an hour winds. And so that story has a really happy ending, but it's important that you're self-sufficient. Um, don't rely on just the leader to, to have know where you're going and when to turn and is this the right way to go left or right at this junction. You need to know that. You need to have a map, whether you download a map on your, uh, on your device, which is what I typically do, and also you know carry a printed map. That's a really good backup. Um, carry the 10 essentials. Know what those are. Um, have the right layers for the weather that you're going to be facing or could potentially be facing, realizing that if you're in the mountains, that can change really quickly. Uh, make sure that the group leader has set expectations for the group. You know, are we are we staying together the entire time? Are we uh, if we stretch out, do we stop at the at every junction and wait for the last the slowest person to catch up? Do you have somebody who's, who's basically acting as sweep for the group to make sure that we nobody gets lost or takes a wrong turn? Um, it's really important that you know that the group has a plan and that you, know, you help make sure that you do your part to stick to that plan. Um, be aware of your surroundings. Just because you're in a group doesn't mean that there aren't dangers out there from both wildlife and or other people. And so you have to listen to your instincts for that. There's some, you know, just you, you kind of know, let your spidey sense tell you if you're getting bad vibes, maybe that's not the right group and maybe you need to uh, pull the plug. I'll, I'm going to, this, this particular picture that I have on this slide is a, from a three, three day backpacking trip I did in the Grand Teton wilderness. And this fellow here, Karsten lives in Germany and I had only known him and met him online prior to this three-day backpacking trip in the backcountry. So we weren't near anybody else. I don't think we saw hardly anybody for the first two days. And, um, you know, but we did know enough about each other that we felt like we could, um, uh, you know, we felt like we understood their capabilities and we understood kind of what we were, we were up to. So uh, I saw a couple more people join. Thank you for joining the live stream. If you could leave your name or leave a, uh, leave a comment to the live stream. Let us know that you're here and where you're connecting from. And if you have ever hiked in a group or led a group, how did you find that group? That's my question for you. We'll get some of the knowledge, the uh, wisdom from some of you as well. These are just a few examples of group hikes and why they're so awesome. So um, on the far left, you have a couple people who did the Central Oregon Six Pack of Peaks Challenge, which is uh, part of the Six Pack of Peaks Challenge series. And you can see that they're celebrating the completion of their challenge. So at a local brewery, we're having a good time and just having a great time. It's the camaraderie and the community around a group of people with a common goal. Uh, this wintry scene that comes next is on the side of Mount Rainier. And uh, myself and a friend of mine had signed up to do Mount Rainier back last year in May. 
early season. So there was a lot of snow and it, and we got buried in it. Um, we could have gone just the two of us, but neither of us felt like we had the right skills to do that confidently. And so we went with a guide service. And, you know, that's another form of a group that you can use. The guide service provided the know-how, the knowledge, and some of the some of the gear, but certainly the expertise and the wisdom to know is, you know, do we do we go push for the summit or do we turn around and uh, and what the answer is there. So really, that's a really good example of when you definitely want to go with a group. This next picture is from the top of Mount Adams, which is uh, another high peak uh, in Washington state. And I did this with a group of friends and here we are at the top. Um, this is a case where we didn't go with a guide service, but we did definitely go with a group and we had to go through, uh, go up snow fields where we used crampons and an ice axe and had to be prepared to self arrest and all of that. And it's just an extra level of safety to have other people who've got your back in case somebody injured themselves, twisted a leg or something like that, we'd have a, a, a way to um, uh, to deal with that rather than just relying on strangers hopefully coming by. Uh, this next picture is uh, a great picture from one of our Six Pack of Peaks ambassadors in Southern California, uh, Cece, and her group from Hike Beyond the Hills. And we'll talk a little bit, I'll share a little bit about um, how they connect and, and the ways that they are able to do things. They have, they'll have, they often lead group hikes in Southern California up many of the, the hikes, uh, the peaks in the six pack of peaks. And then the final one on the top right is me leading a group hike again, this time up Mount Bachelor in the Central Oregon Challenge. And we had a, a pretty good sized group that, that did that peak in the challenge together. And we just had a beautiful bluebird day, great experience, and you get to meet new people. And so um, let's talk a little bit about that. Like, what are some of the ways that you can, you know, the techniques that I've used that uh, to help find other people to hike with and, and, and what works? So I'm going to take, take a look at that. These are just a few examples. Um, obviously, you're going to start with friends and family. So if you have friends who are into hiking or you have a family, that are might be interested in hiking, talk to them, get them involved, you know, start just do some easy hikes to, to see if they like it, you know, enjoy the, the fresh air. Sometimes it's nice to cap off a hike with, uh, you know, um, a picnic or a nice, you know, cold lemonade or other beverage, um, you know, make it fun. It's not just about, you know, fitness or getting, you know, going, climbing up a mountain. It can be just a stroll on the beach. It can be a lot of different things, but try to make it a fun experience for the people so that they want to do it again and maybe try something a little bit more difficult next time. Um, events like the one pictured here in the photo, uh, the Climb for Heroes is a great way to connect with other hikers. Um, the Climb for Heroes event is an annual fundraiser for the Heroes Project which works with disabled veterans who've lost um, one or both legs in service. And so it's a hike up Mount Baldy in Southern California. And every year I lead a group of Team SoCal Hiker up, up the uh, out Mount, Mount Baldy as part of that Climb for Heroes event. And it's a lot of fun because we get a chance to see a bunch of people that we might know online through social media or we might have hiked with a long time ago, but for a variety of reasons, geography or time and schedules, we aren't able to hike together very often. And so this is a really neat way to be able to reconnect with people and you see people that you know uh, from the past and you get to um, rekindle those friendships. So that's a great way to be able to connect with people. Uh, Facebook hiking groups are an excellent way to kind of connect with other folks. Um, as well as meetup.com. And I'll show you examples of both of those. Um, online communities, such as, and there's lots of these, but one example would be the forums on socialhiker.net are a great way to, to connect with people. And we've had a lot of people who have said, hey, I'm going to be hiking this particular peak next Saturday. Is anybody interested in joining me? And they make connections through that way. If they if they you know click and they fit together well, their hiking styles are well suited, they might hike again together. And if they don't click, they don't have to hike together, other, together again. There's no harm in that. Um, there are a ton of hiking clubs 
through churches. You can check with your local church, organizations like the Sierra Club or even other, you know, nonprofit or other organizations. And I'll I'll share a few examples of those. Um, one of the examples, one of our ambassadors, Carl, had suggested for some of the groups that um, some of the hikes that he leads, he just has a, an email list. So he has friends that he's hiked with over time, over the over the years, and he adds them to a list of people that he can send out an email saying, hey, I'm interested in doing this particular hike. Would anyone like to join me? And, you know, he'll get some responses and he knows all of those people because he's hiked with them before. And so it's a really nice way to kind of keep that community together. And that's oftentimes what a lot of people do is they'll start with a larger group. You end up making friends that you kind of click with. You have the similar, um, you have similar likes and dislikes. You have a similar hiking pace or um, purpose behind your hiking. And so you'll find people that you kind of click and fit together with. And then, and then you might not necessarily go to a group event or a group hike. You might just set up via email or text message or social media and say, hey, let's get together and this weekend and do this peak or do this trail. All right, um, I wanna go to the next thing. Let's see, all right. Um, so I'm gonna share some examples here and I'm, I wanna start with Facebook because we're on Facebook already so if um you know you're already familiar with facebook because you're here on this live stream and what i did is i clicked on this little on the top middle the groups icon and i get uh, a tab that shows a bunch of groups and i can type in the search a phrase as simple as hiking and i'm going to get lots and lots of hiking groups california hiking and backpacking uh, friends that hike, hike Oregon, hiking our California, hiking photographers, San Diego hiking society, Orange County hiking, and you know, it just goes on and on and on. And you can go, if you choose, you could be more specific and say a particular city or state or region and, and really kind of drill into that and find groups to hike with. So it's a really nice way to be able to find folks some of them are more active than others. And so as you go into, let's just look here. Um, we'll look at a few examples. So, you know, everyone hikes. It's a private group. It's got 2,400 members. Um, and, you know, you can read a little bit about the purpose. And if you want to join it, you can just click and go through. Um, if we scroll down, I'll go way, way down here. Look at some other stuff. Um, Hiking the Smokies, it's a public group. Uh, there's 85,000 members and it's for people who love hiking in the Great Smoky Mount Mountains. And they get about 10 or more posts a day. So you get an idea of whether it's an active group or not. Um, you know, hiking friends, 33 of my friends are members. So that might be something I, I would wanna be a member to. Um, and there's a lot of examples here. So, you know, 50 plus hiking and backpacking. You might um, see by the, the gray hairs in my beard and my on my head, that might be a good group for me. I don't know. So there's lots of different groups for lots of different you know types of kinds of people and ages and everything else. So whatever your focus is, you can find a group on Facebook. Uh, just as an example, I'm going to share the um, uh, SoCal Hikers where there, we have 66,000 members. And there's a lot of people who are asking for advice like you know this person's asking for recommendations for sturdy hiking poles and if we scroll down a little bit further you know we see people sharing you know places that they've hiked uh oh here's a great example uh jose padilla asked Who, who's going hiking tomorrow morning around the chino area and look nine comments so you can go in and see other people are like yeah i'm interested in hiking this is what it looks like let's connect let's let's do a hike together so, um, you know, anybody backpacked up San Gorgonio, which backcountry campsite did you stay in? I want to do that. So there's lots of ways for you to be able to connect with people through Facebook. It's a really great resource. Um, I mentioned, let me skip around a little bit. I'm going to go to, to Meetup. If you're not familiar with Meetup, it's, a, it's also a great way to be, find things that are very specific to a topic. And any topic, any region, any particular area. 
Um, this is a group called Hiking OC, and it's one of many hiking groups just in Southern California. They have similar groups all across the country. And this one group has almost 15,000 members, and they've been running for years and years and years. In fact, I used to lead some of the hikes back in 2010 in this particular group. So you could actually go back into the event calendar and, and find that. But you can see, you know, Tuesday, tonight, uh, Tuesday night, they did a hike at Peters Canyon. Tomorrow, they have one in Fullerton. Uh, the next day, they have one at Whiting Ranch. Actually, they have a couple hikes. They have one in Turtle Rock near UCI and so on. And so it's a great way to be able to kind of plug into some things and find um, a group of people who you might kind of click with. And then if you want to do some, you know, plan some bigger, harder, more you know, strenuous hikes, you'll find people that you kind of know what their ability level is based on the more local hikes that you've already done with them. So um, uh, Meetup is a great source for that. I highly recommend Meetup. Another one is, in, depending on the region you're in, there's oftentimes organizations. This one is for Washington State, and it's the Washington Trails Association. And they have a series of hiker, re hiking relating or outdoor related events, like a wildflower flower hike in Lyle Cherry Gorge on March 24th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And you can, the hike is five miles, da 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 da, and you can go and register for that. But they have all kinds of other kinds of things. If you have children, you can learn all about rocks for junior ecologists. You can do birding in the park. There's a amorous amphibians night hike where you'll learn something actually about native frogs and their habitat in a guided hike. Uh, sometimes it's as simple as a walking tour. So look for uh, organizations like the Washington Trails Association or others that can oftentimes have you know, great regional events that you can connect with other people and, uh, and, and you'll find those friends to hike with. Um, I mentioned earlier the Sierra Club is one of the examples, and they have a program that runs every winter. It just ended for this year, but it's the uh, Sierra Club Wilderness Travel Course. And if you ever thought, like, maybe I want to get into backpacking at some point, this is an excellent, excellent program. It's six weeks, I believe. Um, I think if we looked at the course, it would tell you a little bit more, but it's a it's a very intensive program with some classroom time and a lot of field time going out, learning how to use a map and compass. You're learning how to use your GPS application to navigate and find your way when there isn't even a trail and, uh, you know, get unstuck, basically. Uh, learning how to travel safely in different conditions, including in snow and learning how to backpack for the first time. And the people, the friends that I have who've been through the program have remained almost without exception, have remained connected with their team, their little group that they made um, through the wilderness travel course. So uh, this, they do registration in the fall for the, the, that winter year. And here, you know, you can see on the slideshow examples of like this, this one um, of them snow camping, you know, up in the mountains. And so lots of really cool experiences and great friendships made through the Wilderness Travel Course. I also talked about there are other groups and organizations. And so, for example, uh, this is just one of literally hundreds called Women Who Hike. And Women Who Hike has chapters all around the country. So regardless of where you are, you can probably find some. And they have, you know, they encourage women to get together and explore the outdoors and you know enjoy that sense of accomplishment they organize a lot of their stuff through facebook groups and they'll have a calendar where a lot of the group hikes are posted so you can see different things that they have going on and that is one of many events um, another one this one is another group for women called hiker babes and you can see a series a whole series of upcoming events just for march and so basically there's a group for pretty much any, you know, any group of person, any age, any, uh, you know, if you want co-ed, if you want women only, if you want men only, if you want, um, you know, people who, you know, speak a certain language or whatever, you can probably find a group that's focused on that. And, and that's the great thing about 
this sort of thing. I did mention that uh, there are people who are connecting specifically for the six pack of peaks because I know Terry was asking about that. Um, we have people who have connected through the forum in on Social Hiker. So let's just uh, very quickly take a look at that. I'll go to Social Hiker and just show you kind of where that is. So if you're interested in the Six Pack of Peaks Challenge, or even if you've just done the Six Pack of Peaks Challenge in the past, you can go to the forums, or I can click on Discussion Forums, and it'll give me a, uh, a list of all of the forums. And I can see uh, the notice about the live stream here. And um, what else? Um, you know, 384 discussions going on. And so we could go in and we can connect with people through the campfire and find other folks to hike with. And um, and we've seen examples of that. So people, you know, connect. who, who likes to go backpacking? Hiking groups in LA, um, San Jacinto with a bit of snow uh, and so on. So there's a lot of ways for you to be able to connect with folks. And, and basically all you have to do once you're signed in is start a new discussion and say, hey, um, you know, hey, anyone want to join me for a hike up Mount Baldy next weekend? Um, and then I could say, you know, um, I'm this is this is um, this is my plan. And then I can you know go ahead and type in you know more details about what I want to do and say post. And now I can be and I can click this box so I'm notified via email if somebody replies. So that's a super way to get connected with a very focused community of folks um, in that particular case. So those these are just a few of the ways that you can connect with other folks and find people to hike with. And some of the things that have worked well for me, um, you know, I'm actually at a point right now where I am looking to connect with some more people to hike with. I've. You know, I have some friends that I hike with and sometimes they get busy or their lives, you know, they're, they're busy with work or whatever. And so I want to broaden that circle a little bit and find some other folks to, to do some hiking with. And so, um, you know, I'm going to be looking at Meetup. I'm going to be looking at Facebook to find folks that I can, you know, try to try it out with and do some hikes with. And then when I find the folks that I feel really comfortable with, then... I'm going to, you know, start, I'm going to add them to my email list and we'll, we'll be able to coordinate offline. Hey, Jen, thanks for joining. I'm glad you could, you could join tonight. Um, if you have any ideas or questions about how to find people to hike with, leave me a comment below. I'm going to hang out here for a few minutes and just, we'll see where that rolls. You know, if you guys have any questions, we can, um, we can address them right here and see, just what, um, uh, you know, what, what, what I, I want to make sure that we answer any questions you have about finding folks to hike with. So please let me know. Let's see. Hey, Philip, thanks for joining. Charles, Shoba, Brenda, Saeed, Sue, thanks for joining. Awesome. Gary Liu. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, Gary says Meetup worked really well for him. Yeah, it's worked well for me too. I've I've done that for a long time, and it's um, it's been one of the go tos for me. Um, now I will say this about Meetup, and it's the same with any hiking group that you do or any people that you hike with. You're not always going to click with everybody, and so there were I, there have been some Meetup groups, hiking groups that I clicked with, and I felt like, oh yeah, these are my people, and I feel good. This is you know very comfortable for me. And there were other groups where I'm like, nah, I don't know. It doesn't feel quite right. Maybe it was too, you know, rigid or maybe too, um, you know, I don't know. You name it. There's always going to, there's, there's always going to be something that is, um, that might not fit with, well with you. And that's fine because there's another group that will. So keep at it. Keep plugging away. Know that there will be some that um, fit well and some that don't. And if you have, if you run into any of the uh, situations where you like, you find a group and you're like, you know, I, what do you think about this group or that group? What are the pros and cons? Feel free to message me and I'll try to help you out if I can. 
I can talk about a lot of the West Coast, but not much on the East Coast or in between. So um, uh, I might have to rely on other friends across the country to help share their advice in those particular places. Um, Jenny is asking, what area am I in? I'm on the West Coast right now. I'm in uh, Bend, Oregon, Central Oregon. And uh, I'm going to be, my next stop is, I'm getting super excited for, I'm going to be down in New Mexico uh, doing some hiking down there with a group of friends that we know each other. And some of us just hi have hiked together and some of us just know each other online or met in person maybe. But uh, there's going to be, right now, I think there's seven of us that'll be hiking um, eight different peaks in northern New Mexico in the beginning of June. So I'm really stoked for that. Looking forward to that. And I'm also going to be traveling with um, one of my coworkers here, uh, Ethan, and we're going to stop through... Um, uh, in Salt Lake City and hit one of the new peaks in this year's Utah Six Pack of Peaks Challenge. So we're gonna we're gonna be doing gosh a lot of a lot of hiking in this the, that time. Hey Carissa, thanks for joining. I thought this is this is really awesome advice. Um, important to give as a leader. It's very important to give a good description of the planned hike when you're inviting others, so people can gauge their ability before joining. Um, super good advice. Um, when I first did the six pack of peaks challenge, I actually posted those as group hikes. This is going back before it was an official challenge. This goes back to 2010. And I posted those in that OC hiking meetup group, um, as group hikes. And you have to know what the rules are, like what's the largest group size. And for most any, most any hike that goes into a wilderness area, um, that limit is probably about 12 people. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's a little bit more. So I always made sure that we capped off the number of people who could join. And the other thing I, I did, because um, any of the hikes in the original Six Pack of Peaks are very strenuous and very difficult hikes. Um, they may not be technically difficult, but you know you have to be able to hike double digit mileage with 3,000 or 4,000 or, or more vertical feet um, up and down. And you need to be able to, you know, take care of yourself through, through that and know how your body responds. And so one of the rules that I had was I had to have hiked with you before, before I let you onto the RSVP list. And so that's a great way to kind of, you know, control, um, you know, who joins the group or who joins the, the thing. And I, and I think that's a really good point though. Like just making sure that people know how, um, how the planned hike is going to go, you know, how long it's going to take, what kind of pace it's going to be, how many, how many miles is it? How much vertical gain is it? What are sort of the challenging parts of it? Is there any kind of scrambling or is there a drop off that might make some people nervous? Those are all good things to put in the description and all good questions to ask if you're joining a group hike that you haven't ever done before. Um, one other thing that I'll say about group hikes, if you do have questions, please leave a comment down here and we'll get to those. Um, one other thing that I like about group hikes um, as, as, and just joining as somebody who um, is participating in the group hike is that it's a great way to experience a trail with somebody who has done the trail before. So if you're going with a leader who this isn't their first time, they maybe have hiked this trail many times, um, it's a great way to be able to experience that trail with somebody who knows it confidently, knows it well, and can you know guide you basically based on um, what, their, what their experience tells them. Um, bear in mind that accidents still happen. There was a, uh, a hike that I did uh, when I was living in Los Angeles uh, up Echo Mountain. And there was a group of people that would hike up Echo Mountain every Wednesday night after work, every Wednesday night for, you know, they've been doing, and they're still doing it now, and they've been doing it for years. And one of the group leaders actually stumbled, hit his head on a rock and, and for unfortunately passed away on one of the hikes. 
And so even though he'd hiked it hundreds of times before, that sort of thing can happen. And so you have to be aware of sort of, you know, there are risks involved in hiking. There are things that can happen. Now, obviously, it would have been a whole different situation if he had been by himself. And, um, um, you know, it, he had the best possible opportunity for uh, a successful outcome. Unfortunately, he did not have that. But um, just by, you know, being in a group was a, was a, a positive. So, um you know, even a, a controlled hike, you know, there's things can happen. So you just have to be flexible in that way and aware of that. And that's one of the reasons why I mentioned, you know, the 10 essentials are really are essential. So you've got to have first aid, you've got to have food, electrolytes, water, all of those things that you might need. Ah, oh, let's see. Any other questions? Let's see if what we have here. I don't see. Hmm. Karina, thanks for joining. Um, we have a bunch of topics that we've already covered and I'm hoping that we will, um, you, if you might have a chance to go back later and watch the replay. So this will actually be recorded and go online so that you can watch the whole thing and see my slides and the notes for that. Um, oh gosh. So this is a great one. Jenny writes, this is the hardest part for her right now is that uh, to find somebody who can lead a hike that has previously done some of the peaks in the six peak, six pack of peaks challenge and that everybody's new in the group. And that is a challenge. So uh, I'll, I'll give you two words of advice for that. One is to look for opportunities to maybe collaborate or join with some of the other groups that are doing, uh, that do have experience that you can join for, for that. So you know, a great example would be uh, CC's group, Hike Beyond the Hills. And I know Carissa and Shauna and many other people um, are leading groups that do oftentimes do some of the trails in the Six Pack of Peaks Challenge. So see if you can, you know, look at their schedule, connect with them and try to um, join them on some of the, the hikes. And the other thing that I'll say is that even barring that, most of these trails are very popular. Um what you could do is give yourself some intermediary goals. So for example, if you're looking at doing um, Cucamonga Peak after the snow melts, let's say, but if you're looking at doing Cucamonga Peak as an example, maybe the intermediary goal is to spend one weekend and do just Ice House Canyon and then return. So now you know that section of the trail. That's about a little, maybe a little more than half the trail or about half the, the trail right there. So um, you're already familiar with 50% of it. And then, you know, again, see if you can find another group that you can kind of, you know, connect with, um, tell them your situation and see if they'll let you kind of tag along with them. And uh, that'll give you that boost of confidence, I think. Be aware that in on anything that's an out and back, for sure, you can always turn around. And that's a really important that you go through and, uh, assess. Um, one of the things that when I lead group hikes, if we're trying to hit a particular peak, we have a, a, a turnaround time. And let's say it's noon or one o'clock, but we know that if regardless of whether we made it to the summit or not, by that particular time, that's when we decide we're going to turn around and head back down. Um, and hey, Philip is here. Uh, he's one of the leaders for uh, CC's Hike Beyond the Hills group, and he's leading a group this Saturday. So um, great connect place person to connect with. And, um, you know, that's a great group that I can recommend. And they're on Facebook too. So you can search for Hike Beyond the Hills and you'll find them on there. And somebody will probably put a link into the comments. And if not, I will after this. Um yeah, so those are some of the tips that I've got for connecting with other hikers. Um, we'll go back through just a few examples um, real quickly. Let's see. Um, oh, I got I don't have the presentation open. Um, there it is. All right, so um, you know, talking to friends and family is a great place to start. Get them. Get them involved because if you're going to be spending time on the trail, that could be time away from them. It'd be better to have them join you if, 
unless you need that time away from them. And that, in which case, I totally understand. Um, you know, look for events like Climb for Heroes or other events that you know you can do. Uh, Facebook hiking groups like Hike Beyond the Hills that Philip mentioned. Uh, Meetup.com we talked about. And there's some great meetup groups out there. Um, you'll find not all of them are going to fit. You're not going to click with all of them. You're not going to click with every person. And so you have to go in with a little bit of flexibility and, and be willing to try a couple different groups until you find that one that feels right. Um, online communities are great. And, and oftentimes hiking clubs. A lot of the larger churches, uh, organizations like Sierra Club or um, Women Who Hike or Hiker Babes or any one of the dozens or probably hundreds of special interest groups will have, uh, you know, they'll organize hikes as well. So another great place for you to do that. Um, oh, Mike Thomas, this is great. So um, he says, we're doing the three, two, one challenge um, I, at Mount Pinos on Saturday. None of us have been, but it doesn't look too crazy. What are your thoughts? So, um, I'll share you with you my thoughts. I've done, uh, personally, I haven't done the 3 one challenge. I've done Pinos and I've done Sawmill together. And that's two thirds of the 3 one challenge. And uh, when I did Sawmill, there was it was a winter hike. So we were using snowshoes and micro spikes part of the time because there was a lot of snow on the trail. You had to basically break through the snow and, and do that. So... Um, I think that, uh, the three, two, one challenge is an awesome challenge. I think I know what it's like to go to sawmill and if it's dry, it's, it's really not that, it's not that bad. If you've done some of the other, um, peaks in the six pack of peaks challenge, you, you're, you know, you're pretty well set for doing the three, two, one challenge. Um, and, uh. Uh, I haven't done grouse though, so I can't comment on like adding that additional level. And but the great thing about it is that if you're starting from the Mount Pinus Nordic area, the parking lot there, that staging area, you're doing it as an out and back hike, and so you can always you know pull the plug at some point and turn around and, and come back. Um, oh, Carissa, I'm going to add this to here. Carissa says, Mike, hey, there's a fair amount of snow in that area from what she's seen. So. Uh, research so that you know before you go. Um, one of the things that I like to do is check Instagram. So you can, you know, kind of do a search for Mount Pinos or the 321 Challenge or some of those hashtags and, and find that. And, uh, and then also I like to look at the hike logs on uh, Social Hiker. So you can, you don't even have to be a member of the challenge. And I'll, I'll just show that. So um, we can go up to all the hike logs and we can go into Southern California. And uh, the particular peak for um, that's part of the 321 challenge and the six pack is sawmill. But if you were doing the 321 challenge, sawmill would be a good representative of what the conditions are across those peaks. And so we can look and see the latest ones are from March 18th. And uh, if we look at uh, some of the pictures, we'll see an example of, you know, like what are, what are the trail conditions? That looks pretty dry right there. But, um, you know, there's snow here and snow here right at the parking lot. And so it looks like they had patches of snow along the way. And in fact, um, you know, they, this is the route that they took. This, they had snow covered most of the hike. Uh, crampons or snowshoes recommended, um, and they didn't have them. So <laughs> that's a that's this is why you go and check before you go because uh, you know, you'll get some good information from those. And uh, three, two, one challenge. Check for snow condition. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, oh, Gary, hey, thank you so much for the message, uh, getting you back into hiking in 2015. Um, I know that you say you you haven't finished the six pack yet, but I think you're going to. Uh, you know, I think that's the key is sort of just keep sticking at it. And uh, uh, now for Southern California, you have 11 peaks to choose from. So, um, you know, some of the and some of them are less challenging than things like San Gorgonio, for example, which is a tough one. So, um, 
lots of ways to, to slice and dice it. And I hope that we see you on the finishers list this year. That'd be awesome. Um, any other, a couple, let's see, any other last minute thoughts, any questions, anyone else have anything they want to add any advice on connecting with other folks before we wrap up tonight? I'm kind of scrolling through the, the comments here to make sure I don't miss anything. And looks good, looks great. I, but I'm so thankful that so many of you were able to, um, you were able to join tonight. This has been great. Uh, a lot of good comments on there and advice on what's worked for other folks. So I love to see that, that happening. Um, I've seen people connect with other hikers in ways that I don't didn't even mention here. So I know we've got people who've connected um, in all the ways that we talked about, but even, you know, people connecting through Instagram or tools that I don't even know how to use, you know, like Snapchat or whatever. So um, there's lots of ways for people to connect with other hikers and, um, uh, you know, just get a little creative about it. Uh, be sure to ask around. There's so many resources for you to do that. And I am one of those. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know. And I'm happy to help answer and guide you through that and find the folks that, you know, will become part of your, your hiking tribe. All right. And it's happening right now. I'm seeing it in the comments here. Chris is talking to Jenny and saying, DM me and we'll get you set up. This is awesome. So, you know, hey, congratulations to all of you for that. And I don't know why that sounds not playing, but okay. Um, hey, guys, have a great evening, everybody. I'm going to, uh, there will be a recording of this and um, we'll be watching the comments on it. So if you do have questions or things that come up afterwards, feel free to go ahead and put those into the comments. And we'll, we'll go ahead and get in there and um, get you some answers. So thanks for joining us for this month's theme on connecting with other hikers. And next month, we're going to be talking about trail stewardship and leave no trace. And we maybe, if we're, uh, we're hoping to have somebody help us uh, do some actual leave no trace training. So you can learn about the seven principles of leave no trace, um, why things like you know, the, the orange peel from your snack on the trail really does need to be packed out, even though it is organic and uh, and more. So we're going to talk Leave No Trace, Trail Stewardship and some other things next month in April. And we will see you there. Watch for the announcement on Social Hiker and on Facebook. And we'll talk to you then. Have a great evening, everybody. And we'll see you online.